is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, your world taking place. I am your host for tonight, the late show via Dark Waters, Baron D. Doss. Tonight I have on a guest that is a brother in the faith. We were talking backstage, and if we would have kept on, that would have been a show in and of itself. This man is a minister out of Texas who has a podcast called Bible Mysteries. He is a an actual Bible scholar. So I, I can't wait to talk to him. Ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, Mr. Scott Mitchell. Hey, D. Scott, thanks for what's up, me. brother? Absolutely. Hey, Thank I'm, you I'm excited on. to be here. I'm telling you, me and you both, man. Um, like, like I was telling them, if if I hadn't have paid attention, we would have been back here for an hour in the backstage just <laughs> chilling. We, we ended up talking about the South, right? <laughs> yeah, the South. And we hadn't even gotten to the Bible yet. And we're having a blast. <laughs> that's right. But that's <laughs> that's that fellowship. That fellowship. Amen. 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 So, Scott. Uh, tell the folks a little bit about yourself and what led you to open a podcast. I can already feel the spirit on you. I know that you have a heart for the Lord and for people, but what transitioned from that into a podcast? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, D. And, and it, it started because I got called into ministry as a pastor and Bible teacher uh, years ago. Um, I, I was probably about 33 years old. I'm 60 now. So uh, 33, I felt that call to preach. And uh, eventually ended up moving from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana to Seguin, Texas, which is just east of San Antonio, uh, off of I-10. If anybody's traveled, they've probably been on I-10 at some point in their life. And um, so I uh, was teaching a traveling circuit uh, of, of Bible classes, which eventually led to me starting a church here in my city where I decided to stay, which is Seguin. And we started Grace Family Bible Church around 2005, I want to say. Uh, that sounds about right. And then I began to kind of slowly transition into just stay and focused in this ministry. And it's a small city. Uh, Seguin at the time probably didn't have but about 20,000 people. So we had a very small congregation of just faithful brothers and sisters in the Lord that love the word. And, and we we were just a, a no, no bells and whistles, just a Bible church. Uh, rejoicing in the word and, and fellowship and together. And it's been one of the greatest gifts of my Amen. life is to, to serve that way. But as uh, I began to see things just almost, I'm going to use the word falling apart in the world um, after COVID and stuff like that. And it had been on my heart to do a podcast uh, even years before that, but I just didn't understand the technology well enough to feel like I knew what I was doing. Finally, people that uh, developed these platforms that we use today made it so easy that even a, right. even a monkey like me could do it, you know? Um, <laughs> so that's really what it came down to. It needed to dumb it down to my level. But once, once they did that, we found, a, we found a platform and we started Bible mysteries and um, it, it began to dawn on me that we're, we're so close to approaching the last days. Like Paul said in Romans, the night is far spent. You know, the day is at hand. And, and well, he said that 2000 years ago, but it's it's just so prevalent now that I felt like I need to be reaching more people. And even though I dearly love that assembly, uh, it was not. But, you know, on a good Sunday, it was maybe 35 people. So I decided to retire to devote my time to this podcast. And now we're somewhere around 155000 unique listeners um, Outstanding. So we know there's a greater outreach through social media and these platforms that are that are really Satan's tools, you know, but we're using it. We're using the enemy's weapons against him. Right. Uh, Absolutely. So, um, you know, uh, uh, Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and all that. So we are now on all these uh, devices trying to get the word out that 
this deception that's coming in the last days that the Bible warned us about all those years ago seems to be unfolding before our eyes through, uh, I guess you could say disclosure of what I think could be an alien, uh, a fake alien deception that's going to be fallen angels, but they're going to masquerade as so-called extraterrestrials. Amen. And that's well, why they kind of they have. Me. Yeah, I, I yeah. believe they have. Yep. And, and I commend you, <laughs> sir, for um, your work in the ministry and uh, you listening to the Holy Spirit, because there's no doubt in my mind it wasn't you or uh, you of your own volition that decided yeah. to retire. Folks like you are needed, brother. Um, you're a soldier on a battlefield and you're consciously aware of that. There's so many of our brothers and sisters that aren't. Amen. And, it, and it's uh, at their at their own detriment, unfortunately. I, I agree. The church needs waking up too. You know, the, the yes. church at large is, has been burying its head in the sand too long. And um, we've, uh, it's it's so funny. We've spiritualized away the spiritual battle that, that we face, you know? <laughs> wow. Now, I've never heard it put that way before, but that's absolutely right. Like it's, it's almost maddening. You know, yeah. we, we equate feelings today yeah. to that spiritual battle. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Amen. Uh, we can't hurt their feelings because of their their, their blah 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 fill in the blanks. So yep. the, the church has put their own shackles on. It's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah, it is. And and so much of the focus has been on, you know, just living your best life now kind of stuff. And and I'm not saying that the Lord isn't interested in you living your life to his honor and glory, because he certainly gave us instructions on how we ought to do that. But when we focus so much on the mundane and the doctrine in the Bible and we ignore the actual weapons of our warfare and, and the, the, the spiritual entities that we battle, then we are susceptible. It's like know thine enemy. It's, it goes right back to the same thing. If we're ignoring who the enemy is and therefore he has the advantage until we wake up and start to engage in the battle. Absolutely. And, and we give them legal rights to do what they're doing to us. By having that word in us and not following and not abiding by it, we give up yeah. our legal ground. And it's all the legalistic part of it is extremely obvious. We have an advocate in the court, we have a judge Amen. in the court, we have an accuser yeah. of the brethren, you know? So, yeah, exactly. Like, uh, it, it's, it's maddening. But uh, again, I, I commend you, sir. And the, the Bible ministries God. now, the, the um, your podcast. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you're steeped in, in biblical knowledge. I have a question for me personally. Yeah. Paul, the apostle, when he was a, a Roman born Jew, mm -hmm. and I've had this conversation before. I believe that he was an attendant of the old mystery schools where they would, you know, go to the groves and they would you know, Pythagoras, uh, Aristotle, all these Greek, Grecian, Roman, uh, Romantic era scholars. They all talked about the mystery schools and the demonion and how the demonion, which we would know as demons or devils, would attach themselves to them and mm -hmm. whisper all this arcane mm -hmm. knowledge. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? Or have you ever read anything about Paul in the mystery schools? Not with Paul's connection. And it's interesting you bring that up, D, because what the Bible reveals about Paul is Almost, I, I don't want to say the opposite, but he was as entrenched in a satanic direction as you could be, but not from the standpoint of, of the, the pagan mystery schools, but rather the pharisaical legalism, because Paul mm. was a Pharisee. Right. And you're right. He was absolutely a, a Roman Jew, which seems like a, a contradiction, but it was the perfect man for the job, right? Because Paul right. was the apostle to the Gentiles. Uh, and yet he was born a Jew, raised up in the strictest sect of the law, which is Pharisee, and had a career in that field. So my my thinking would be, and this is pure speculation, so I'll be honest with you, I, I, I've not read more out other than the scriptures on it. But my thinking right. would be that were Paul to adhere to any of the adepts or the, or the occult knowledge of the pagan uh, gods, he would have been kicked out of the Pharisees. Now, I say that, but at the same time, then we go back just a couple of years and uh, in Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, whenever he criticized anybody, it was usually the the, the religious leadership in Israel. Exactly. exactly. And he calls the Pharisees. Hypocrites. Yeah, exactly. But worse than that, and this is what really hits home for me, is he said, ye are of your father, the devil, and the works of your father you will do. 
And when we read in the scriptures where he called them vipers, he wasn't just trying to be insulting. I think he was saying, I know who your father is, the dragon, <clears throat> the serpent. Exactly. I, I so there was a connection on. there, I think, it, it's which is not to say that the Pharisees were openly teaching the, the Pythagorean type cult or any of the pagan knowledge, but they were certainly satanic in what they did because they were the ones responsible uh, ultimately for having Jesus Christ crucified. Th that's exactly right. And everything you just mentioned, the, the, the secrecy of those old occult Gnostic mystery schools and stuff. I could see and, and Jesus who could see past their outward appearance to see into their hearts and their deeds. Mm -hmm. You know, that was just a, a theory that um, I had thrown around there, but and, and it's great having someone who's steeped in the knowledge of the Bible, like yourself doing a Bible mysteries podcast. Uh, that's phenomenal. And I'll advertise it on every show that I have because folks need to not only know the rich history and the beauty of this multidimensional book, but, Every mystery, it has a mystery on top of it. The mystery of God, the mystery of yeah. the Godhead, or the, the, there's so much understanding that can be had at different levels that um, folks are, are amiss to actually read it and then put it down, you know, and say, oh, well, I've exactly. read the whole Bible. Well, I, I'm really glad you asked that question, Dee, because you actually bring up an interesting thought that now you've encouraged me to go do some studying on it. Because it's it's funny that you had drawn in your own mind a conclusion that he could have been trained in those occult mysteries, uh, when in reality, um, we know that Judaism did degenerate into this Kabbalah teaching, yes, the Babylonian yes, Talmudic teachings, and that that rabbinical line was clearly based on paganistic teaching. So there could have been a connection there. And I know a guy probably that w could tell me if there was a connection. I'll just give a shout out to a, a brother in Christ named Gary P. Wayne, who uh, Gary P. Wayne, you know, yes, Gary sir. Wayne, the, the uh, I don't know him personally, but yeah. I don't know. But he's a great, great friend our, uh, of, of our brother and sisters and yeah. uh, fantastic author. Yeah. So I, I bet you any money that that volume is so exhaustive. Cons uh, Genesis 6 conspiracy. I, I could probably go do some reference studying and find <laughs> something about what you said in there. Or, or if, if it's not in there, he's writing one now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no doubt. Uh, or, or he has the information in that big lockbox that he got yes, on brain because it, that man exactly. is steeped in so much knowledge. <laughs> uh, that's phenomenal. But that, that's one of those things that, uh, you know, when we talk about the richness of the history of the Bible and, it, it, and its importance, a lot of people don't understand that, um, like uh, Flavius Josephus, the warrior and uh, historian, mm -hmm. the arguments that our brother, and there's a lot of brothers and sisters who are subscribers to not only Dark Waters channel, but mine as well. So we can have a little bit more lax conversation. Um, yeah. The What would you say to our brothers and our sisters? who go out amongst the world and mm -hmm. are bombarded with these arguments. Oh, oh, you've heard them all. Jesus, not real, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Or is that an argument that's worth engaging in? Cause I encourage people to do their studying to, because Flavius Josephus, as I said, uh, he Jews were no fans of Jesus, you know, uh, religious yeah. Jews back in those days. And he wrote of the existence of such a man. So is it yeah. worth it to a believer to engage in these types of, of, confrontations or debates or should they just refrain from it to you know move away from whatever strife may lie there yeah, that that is a great question and i'll tell you you almost have to approach it in my experience from a case-by-case -case basis because we know that the word of god does not return void so any amount of time we spend engaged in trying to defend the faith or or promote and share our testimony and the gospel is time well spent because it's the Lord's time that he gave us. Amen. On the other hand, there are times when Jesus commanded the 12 that if they won't receive you, shake the dust off your feet. And, and speaking to Paul, when we mentioned him earlier, even he did the same in certain areas. So I think there's a point at which we, I call it, uh, don't get trapped in the game of yes, but. And you'll know you're in it when a person seems to have a, a legitimate question and maybe they're agnostic or maybe they're atheist or, or maybe they just are religious and they disagree with your position. But they ask a question and you go to the word and you try to share it and they say, yes, but what about this? 
And then you go to that passage and you try to share that truth. And two or three times into that, you realize, oh, they don't want to know the answer. They want to play a game. And right. then they then, you know, there's something satanic about them wanting to waste your time. Not that they're intending to be satanic, but maybe they're being oppressed. And, and that gets back to realizing that, that the spiritual battle, sometimes you're engaging in a person who is demonically controlled, not necessarily possessed as in the, the first century type of uh, um, d- demons that Christ cast out, but very, very much demons in the sense that they are trying to engage you, to frustrate you, to fluster you to get you angry, lose your cool, Mm. whatever. And that helps in their mind to destroy your testimony. And I I learned a lesson one time from a mentor of mine who's passed away and he's with the Lord now. Uh, His name was E.C. Moore. And I I probably learned a, a huge amount of Bible from this man over the years. And at a conference one time, I watched a man come up to him at a break. He had preached and this man said something along the lines of, uh, preacher, what you said something, but what about this? And I don't remember what the question was, but Brother Moore opened his Bible and he showed him a passage. And the guy said, yeah, but what about this? And Brother Moore turned to that passage and he answered that question. And I think he did it one more time. And Brother Moore took his Bible and he closed it and he tucked it under his arm. And he said, well, I see what your problem is. You don't believe this word. What did you think about that uh, uh, Knicks game last night? And he just started changing the subject to sports. <laughs> yeah, let, yeah, let's take it out of the spiritual and get back to the world. Something you'll enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, he knew a, that he was it was a losing it. battle. He wasn't going to waste his time or the Lord's time, you know. Absolutely. And uh, as uh, being a younger Christian and just kind of being thrown on the battlefield and, and still cutting my baby teeth, throwing steak. You know, I've made that mistake before. Yeah. Um, engaging Me with too. people that try to bring out anger and they yeah. will deny the Holy Spirit in you. And that's something yeah. that always brought me into anger, but the Lord backed me up after a while and said, okay, take a look at this. What, what is it doing? What is yeah. it doing for the work that I've compelled you to do? Then it's like, wow, that's a, that's a very intricate trap to be put in. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. You talk about when you're, when you're a babe in Christ and you're new to the faith, um, you know, we have all this zeal, but we don't always have a whole lot of knowledge, but we're right. ready to charge hell with a water bucket, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, absolutely. Um, and so we get out there and I can recall as a young Christian uh, having discussions with people and, and sharing the truth and and feeling my knees knocking as I was talking to them. Because you could just tell you were engaged in the battle. There was some entity there. Yes. You had the Holy Spirit in you, but, there, but fighting against you and striving against the truth was this entity somehow present. And you could just feel it. And while it, you weren't necessarily scared in your mind and in your heart, but your body sensed it. And like, I could remember my knees knocking, shaking as I was talking to people sometimes. And, and I, I tell you, when we get older, we almost lose that zeal, but which is not to say you won't encounter entities again. You do. Right. But I think we mature in the faith and we get we get stronger in the word. Hey, Amen. And, and you said it right there, Pastor. We have to eat, breathe and sleep that word. We, the, if we lean into our own understanding at all. And like I told you all fair, being a deliverance minister, for mm-hmm. whatever reason, the Lord's given me uh, an extra portion in the gift of discernment of spirits. Amen. And um, and, it, and it becomes rough, like what you just said. With the first time you minister to someone, and it's strange because it's different than when someone has an indwelling of, of one of these wicked spirits or even an attachment. When you're ministering yeah. the truth to someone, there it's it's almost like this bully just stepped onto the playground with you. Yeah, and, it, and it's it's an intimidation type thing. Uh, it, it's very very intimidating, especially if you've never ministered the word before. So um, yeah, that's that's true. That's a, good piece of knowledge to pass on to folks and greater is he that's in us though than he that's in that's the very verse i was thinking of when you said that i was like oh man this guy's a brother for sure because he just you, you, talk, you read my mind literally <laughs> yeah, bro i felt i felt like i said backstage i felt the holy spirit when we we're just chopping it up and talking having fun yeah, yeah so yeah. um and and i i can't i'm tickled to death honestly uh, mm-hmm. i love that your that your podcast is doing so well and i mm-hmm. sincerely hope that you being a guest here will generate it forward three times as much because those shows like you do are needed. Someone who no, not only knows the word, but has it ingrained in their heart. Now uh, these folks, a lot of them, they want to hear the, like I told you, we're the supernatural quote unquote realm. 
uh, yeah. myself being a, a field investigator for Bigfoot and what they call Dogman and all this stuff. Now, the supernatural elements of this, uh, you and I and a lot of folks know what's really going on. There's a spiritual battle in the world that we cannot see. Yeah. But with these physical entities like your Bigfoots and your werewolves and things of that nature. Right. What's your thoughts on that? Like, what are, what are you on the people that interact with them? Yeah. You know, it, it's so funny you say that. I'm, I'm I'm almost embarrassed that I can't think of the title of the author right now, but I'm reading a book by and this could be somebody you've had on as a guest Dee, and you know her vicky joy and the last name escapes me uh, i'm going to look it up but the book is called they come out at night mm, uh, um, this, i know exactly what you're talking about i've not had her on as a guest but uh, i think sleep paralysis you know what i'm talking about yes sir okay so um i, I want to let me give her some credit here i'm going to find it they come out at night i'm just doing a quick google search search uh, so I can give proper credit where credit is due because these people work hard uh, to get the word out. And uh, uh, here we go. They come out at night. Uh, here's the book. Vicki Joy Anderson. My apologies to Vicki Joy. I've never met her, uh, but I want her to know that I've been blessed just reading this book already. Uh, she is um, she's a friend of L.A. Marzulli, who's who's a friend of mine. And so I hope to meet her myself, but they only come out at night is the book. And it's about the exposing the dark weapon of sleep paralysis. And she, believe it or not, the book is not just about nightmares. It's about entities like you just mentioned, D, like vampires, werewolves, uh, incubus type things, uh, shadow people, whatever, you know, whatever these so-called entities are, Bigfoots. And right. um, it's interesting because every chapter ends with a prayer. And she says, and, and basically, Lord, may I not be fascinated by this, but be, be overly interested in these things, you know, protect me, put your mantle of covering over me uh, and let me, let me uh, rid my home of any portals that could be opening for these entities to come in. Amen. And so that's a long way to get to the answer to your question. But I believe that we do have these entities out there that I'm not expert on all of them, but I'm starting to see them. Uh, more and more in people's testimony and realizing in almost every single situation, including my own, somewhere in our past, somewhere in our history, or possibly even in our generational history, a portal was opened to allow. And when you said earlier, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, you know, um, she goes at great lengths in this book, Vicki Joy Anderson, about how when we invite someone into our home in many cultures, you know, when they step over that threshold, they're your guest and they become like mm. family and you are responsible you know, to, to be hospitable to them, to take care of them while they're there. And uh, in a very real sense, um, you were talking about how the spiritual realm more operates in a legal way, you know, because we have an attorney, a prosecuting attorney called the accuser of the brethren. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. The, the devil's a lawyer, you know. <laughs> but, um, of course he is. <laughs> of course he is, right? But they, but they do operate in, in a legal, uh, they have permission to do so much, but we have to give them permission to Amen. come in. And we do that through spiritual portals, whether it's as simplistic as a Ouija board or whether great, great grandpa was a Mason or something and made a contract. I mean, one way or another, we're finding out that people have generational curses that are coming, being manifested in their lives. And we have to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to rebuke these entities and him to close those portals. And we need to rid our homes of the, of the things that we're allowing in uh, to cross our threshold, so to speak. So I wanted to give credit to uh, Vicki Joy Anderson for that thought. And I'm glad you looked up her name because that book is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And I forgot all about the prayers mm -hmm. at the end of the chapters, but that's important. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. Dark Waters, I call him the modern day Mark Twain. He, he's one of the greatest storytellers. He can take someone's um, experience that they've had and, and retell it in a compelling way and give people information through that telling. And myself, like I said, in the field, as a field investigator for these uh, uh, so-called cryptids, the one thing that we've both been compelled over the past couple of years to tell folks is what we give an inordinate amount of attention to that inordinate amount of attention is a form of worship yeah so when we put it on the scales okay are we looking at bigfoot and dogman and werewolves more than we're um singing enjoy in the spirit of the lord 
or having fellowship with our brothers and sisters of the faith or going to church or reading our Bible, when you put those on the scale, they should go one way beyond a shadow of a doubt. But yes. more, more than likely, they go the other one, the other way, brother. And uh, that's when people get put in jams. Yes. They get uh, poltergeists and all that kind of stuff in their house, which is separate from these what's supposed to be the North American wood ape, Magilla Gorilla in the woods somewhere. Yeah. So, I mean, there has to be a connection. There is. And, and I think you're absolutely right. When we get too engaged in the, the paranormal aspect of it all, uh, rather than wanting to find the connection these things might have in scripture and then let the Lord's Holy Spirit teach us what yes. he has to say about it and not speculate too much. We, some things he doesn't reveal. You know, we, we only get tiny glimpses into the angelic realm in the word of God. You That's know? exactly right. Because he wrote the book to men to mankind. And uh, he, he wanted us to know a little bit about him. But you remember when Christ said, you know, to the 12, uh, blessed are your eyes because, uh, or you believe because you see, blessed are they who had not seen and yet they believe. Yes. You know, uh, that, that's the old doubting Thomas. Yeah, when he exactly. Came, I, yep, uh, he said, I'm not going to believe it until I put my finger in his wound. <laughs> but, it, and everybody uses doubting Thomas as, as an insult, but Thomas was, he was, a, he was an apostle. Yes. He doubt the Lord or his abilities. He just he was he was the representation, I think, of a logical man. And, I think um, he was. I think he was a know, very practical person. And he just yes. needed he needed that. <clears throat> excuse me. He needed that confirmation. But you and I living in this century, we never saw Christ. We didn't see his miracles. That's but right. we believe by faith the word of God that wrote of it. And, and so we see it through the eyes of, and through the lens of Scripture. Amen. This part is in the modern times, there's no, there's not even a real doubting Thomas. Um, people have to, they have to see. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this stuff with the supernatural beings and entities they are seeing coming to their house or in these woods, they're physically seeing it. So it's almost become a religion of sorts because there's only a handful that see it. So these yeah. are the priests that are going behind the veil. These are your, right. your Bigfoot field investigators that bring back the messages from these entities. And it's, oh, it's yeah. a very religious thing. And it can get uh, it can get very hairy. But to you, another question. Out of all your years in ministry, mm -hmm. we talk about spiritual warfare. Here recently, with all the people that reach out to you that need help or brothers and sisters, you know, giving good. Have you ever seen more demonic activity? at any point in time during your ministry than right now? Is it all just busting loose or is it th that a microcosm? Or are we just seeing it here and there? To me, it's busting loose. Uh, I'll be honest. <clears throat> Until very recently, I, I paid short shrift to the spiritual battle. I knew the passage, Ephesians 6, 12. I, I understood that it was out there, but I didn't, I didn't see it as a real, I, I didn't see the physical reality of the spiritual battle, if that's a way to put it. In other words, that makes that sense. It, and, and I began to realize that it was, it was, I was not praying for the covering and the protection daily that I need to until one time I was a guest on um, Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. And um, they make you uh, use a landline because it's a radio program and they don't trust internet. Uh, phones or cell phones. And I don't have a, a landline in my home anymore. You know, who, who has a landline anymore, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, I, what I, I used to go to where my wife works. Uh, there's a, a, a phone system, a hardwired system, and it's middle of the night at you know, 8, 12 a.m. or whatever. So uh, nobody's there. So I could go in and, and do the call from there because I've been on the show like five times. And so I kind of got into a routine of how to do it. And the fourth time I was on the show, the school was uh, doing some remodeling. So the phone lines were down. There was maintenance going on. So I just decided to check into a local hotel. And because it was such, I was going to be getting up at two in the morning to do the interview. So I checked in, went to sleep and woke up a, an hour before the interview to do it. And um, I, I felt fine. I went there feeling good, excited about the, the interview and, and ready to go. Woke up feeling great got the call going. And the minute we started talking, D, it was as though something grabbed me by the throat and was choking me. And I could barely 
get sound out of my voice. Now I have terrible allergies, especially this time of year, but this was unlike anything I've ever experienced. And it was, it was like, what in the world? And as soon as the, even at one point, George said, are you all right? <laughs> I mean, you could, he could hear me struggling. Wow. And so at one point uh, when, when, when the thing was over, I said, I'm not going to spend the night here. I, I'd rather drive home. And I didn't live far anyway. <laughs> so I got out of that room and then I suddenly, it was like, it went away. That is, that's what we try to tell people, Scott. Yeah. Like, they, it, folks don't understand. They somehow separate the two, the yeah. natural and the spiritual. But we are spirits. Amen. They, you know, we, we are spirit beings that have fleshly bodies. Right. And spirit's more powerful than flesh. That's why we get our hair standing up on our arm when we walk into a so-called haunted house. Oh, yeah. Uh, the flesh's reaction to a, an invisible spiritual entity. And, man, I'm, it, I was sitting here getting mad like that you had to go through that because you're my brother in the faith <laughs> you, you know what i mean like I, yeah. I, the audacity of them you know um but i'll keep it together because that's you know i think that's why he put me in deliverance ministry because i hate them I, well, really I, I i really believe that the lord let that happen to show me hey dummy you need to be praying for my protection and you you've got i've given you this gift to understand some things but you're not drawing the connection. So I, I've shown you in the word, you're still not seeing it. So I'm going to have to give you a real life example. So it's the old heavenly two by four, you know? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, go ahead and put your hands on them. And then he'll, then he'll understand. That so makes a little, sense. A little bit of a Job trial for me in a very small way. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, microcosm of Job because, yeah. boy, Job went through it. Oh, man. Yeah. Which, so, which is I, really I, a picture of Israel in tribulation when you when you boil it down. You know, very much so. Not a lot yeah. of people. I've never heard anybody outside of my pastor from the church I grew up in really make that comparison. He did a whole sermon on it and, and put oh, the wow. juxtaposition out there. Yeah, with the, the juxtaposition between the, him going back and forth was phenomenal. It, yeah. It for, even with like a young 13, 14, 15 year old mind, I was like blown away. But That's so cool. But it's it's amazing. Yeah. And um that can only be led by the spirit, you know, yeah, to amen. give you those deeper truths like we talk about. I agree. So uh, in your ministry, mm -hmm. and I know this is the big coup in your cap, and I know without even asking, does it not make you feel like a million bucks when folks come to you and say, Scott, you know, I was on, I was on the fence. I was a lukewarm Christian, mm -hmm. but because of your ministry and what you say, and, and you led me back to the Bible, like that in and of itself is worth it to me. That's a reward in and of itself oh, because these amen. people- and I know you've seen it like, so is there an increase in that? Cause we talk about the bad elements of the spiritual nature right. of things, but has there been an increase of folks giving themselves to the Lord and turning oh. over their sin lives to him? Amen. Like you wouldn't believe it, it is. It's amazing to hear the testimonies. I mean, first of all, you're absolutely right. It gives you great joy. It, you know, even like when Christ said that the angels rejoice over one sinner that repents, you know, we Amen. too, as believers, rejoice over any human being that would come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, and that, you know, over and over again, we get replies and emails of like, I, I never appreciated the Bible until I heard this or I never fully understand it. You put right. it in a certain way. But what's really astounding to me, D, is that. Lately, we've been seeing things where these are brethren, sisters and brothers in Christ who are writing me saying, until I heard this episode, I never realized how steeped in the new age or, or how, how portals into the occult were open in yes. my home. And when you talked about this, you talked about that. I immediately realized that I've got this thing in my house that I need to get rid of that I thought was Christian. For example, a lady wrote me about crystals, mm. you know. And she thought that was she, basically the church is is uh, embracing a lot of new age thinking of like yoga and meditation. Yes, sir. And, and self-actualization and all that kind of stuff. And um, and so Christians, well-meaning Christians are being uh, sort of misled that it's permissible to have this kind of thing in your home. And this lady wrote me and she was just like, I just I was in shock. You, It was like you were talking about me. And of course, I didn't know her. Um, but she uh, she said, you were talking about me and my exact experience. And I immediately went and I just repented to the Lord of these things. And and what she went on to say is that I even reached out to my children. And she says, and, I, and she wrote me to say, I fear that I've damaged them because I made them believe these things were okay. 
And now I'm going back and telling them, no, no, they're not okay. And they're like, okay, mom, which one is it? You know. So um, right. she's she was in that conundrum of having to go back and say, no, the stuff I taught you was wrong. And so I just want to pray for that person. Uh, and of course I did and, and wrote her back and told her that I would pray for her as well. Because um, it, it's, you know, you do the best you can, but if you raise a child up yeah. in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should, the way go, should and, go and he will not depart from him. That's exactly right too. And, and I've had the same thing. And what I've, uh, what I got a little bit of a different ass uh, look on it. God mm -hmm. made those crystals. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, there's no reason I think to have a bunch of them around your house, but even if you pick one up, knowing that some spirits attach itself to them, get rid of them for them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because this belongs to God. It doesn't belong to you by the power that rose God from the dead and the Holy spirit, this blood atonement at the cross, leave, then throw it back down. If you don't want it, because th these devils have ran roughshod over our people and over the world, the human yes. family. Yes, they for have. So long, like, it, and it's it's because of folks' ignorance. And ignorance isn't a, a, a denigrating thing unless it's not filled with knowledge. And right. a lot of folks, when they hear the truth, they can feel it and they'll accept it. Yeah. Now, if they go full tilt boogie the other way, then well, that's what I think around the time you dust off your cloak and <laughs> keep it pushing. Get the yeah. sand, uh, dust off your sandals. And uh, <laughs> that's been the hard thing for me is when to dust off the cloak and sandals. Uh, there, yeah. was, there was this woman who I, just real quick, because I know you you've you're, you're you're old school in the ministry and I don't get this uh, chance a whole lot. So I, I'm learning, uh, you know, from you as well. But mm -hmm. and, for, and this is for new Christians as well. When we are engaging in that spiritual warfare, and this mm -hmm. person knows that they have demonic entities, they're they're getting sleep paralysis, um, yeah, which is a demonic attack. All Amen. these things, there's no peace in their home, there's strife in their life where there was none before, but they can't pinpoint the source of it. When that person comes to you, though they want to have these things eliminated. Because at some point in time, that devil that they've come into agreement with in some sort of way says, hey, wait a minute, Scott's going to get me out of my home, my house. Then that's how yeah. Jesus referred to it from their perspective. We're their homes, we're their houses. And they yeah. says, here comes Scott Mitchell. He, he's going to, he's going to, you know, kick us right out the front door. You get that rebellion and that pushback against you. Yeah. What would you suggest you do in that, in that point in time? Like. Because that is a confusing point, like where they start attacking you, attacking your faith. Yeah, I I think, um, you know, I, I'm still figuring out some of these things when you're actually in the battle, engaged in the fight. And right. so I am by no means an expert in this, but I know two things. I, I always think about in the book of Jude where... Michael, it says the archangel was uh, disputing over the, the devil, over the body mm. of Moses. And he said, the Lord rebuke thee. Amen. And I thought about it's the power in, in the Lord, in Christ and the creator that and they're one of the same. But, you know, that 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 name, there's no other name under heaven whereby men might be saved. That name is the name above all names. So Michael, as I can't imagine the power and the might that he and he has. I suspect if he appeared, if you and I were having a conversation and he appeared in the room between <laughs> us, we'd probably both pass out. You know. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd have strokes. Yeah, just just drop like like dead men. You know, and um, and I I can't imagine how intimidating a, a character he must be. The prince of Israel, the guardian of Israel. You know, yes. the the captain of God's armies. You know, we we think about the term over and over in the Old Testament, the Lord of Hosts, the Lord of Hosts. And I don't think a lot of Christians realize that the word host means armies. Yes, sir. That Jesus Christ is is the is the commander in chief of an army of angels that are coming back to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. And so if when we encounter these things, even the lowest minion on the on the totem pole of that hierarchy of fallen entities, which I would say would be the demons, you know, the uh, the, the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, they're still more powerful than us you know, as human beings, but greater is the power in us through Jesus Christ. So when we're dealing with these things, my first thought is, first of all, I don't want to encounter them. 
If I can avoid it, I will. But if I'm dealing with a person that needs help, I'm going to be saying to that entity, the Lord rebuke thee. The name Amen. of Jesus Christ. That is the power that they fear. And, and I'll even, and I haven't had to do this personally. I've never yet encountered an entity where I was dealing with them face to face like Jesus did, you know. But I, I suspect that if I ever do encounter that personally, I don't think there would be any harm in reminding them that there is a day of judgment coming for them. Because Jesus Christ, when he encountered that one devil in the man that was a legion, they said, are you come to torment, torment us before the time, which was the before judgment. the time. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So to remind them, listen, you need to leave this individual and stop oppressing them in the name of Jesus Christ. You have a day appointed when you're going to be judged and cast into the lake of fire and you're only making things worse for yourself. You know, so I, I think that the power that is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is the power that we need to wield, the weapon we need to wield when we deal with these entities. And that was beautifully stated. I, I couldn't have put it better myself. I mean, that that is our that is our first, second, and last defense. Amen. It's, it's we're not they're not afraid of us. They sit and watch us, and we yeah. have no idea what's going on. You know what I mean? By the yeah. time they get ready to move on, someone who does not have an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They know every weakness. They know yeah. every vice, every temptation. And I mean, it's just kind of, they, they, somebody said it uh, in the chat one day, they have the greatest case study of mankind. That, oh, yeah. Of, of all time. They, they make FBI forensics look like jokes at a picnic because they have all the time in the world to secretly observe this person. They can wait 10, 12 years before they move in on this person to tempt them into falling away or to tempt them into you know, what's going to end up sending them to hell. So, oh, yeah. You're you're describing the very definition, D, of what the Bible calls a familiar spirit. They know yeah. us so well that they can impersonate our great-great-grandmother, you know, yes. and, and hence the idea of a medium, you know, a, a, a seance to conjure up the dead. These people that dabble in this stuff don't realize they're messing with fire. Sure, there's some yes. frauds out there and it's all chicanery. But there's also real mediums out there that can contact these familiar spirits. And we think of the word familia, you know, here in Texas, that's family, right? And right. They, they know our family history. They can say things about your history that you only you might know because right. they are familiar with your ancestors. Yeah, they, they, they've sat and they've watched you with, sit back with a notebook for hundreds of years, perhaps. And yes. th that's why we have to test every spirit. Jesus, Amen. the stuff that Jesus said, he didn't just make suggestions and be like, hey, gee whiz, guys, it'd be cool if you do this. No, he said them for a reason. Yeah. We don't know, <laughs> world, you know, um, we, we don't know the spirit world. We're not intimately familiar with it. So I lean to the captain of our salvation's understanding. Amen. Because and you and you said it perfectly, Michael, he who is like God, I think his name means. Yes, I mean, he's pretty tough. <laughs> he's, he's a <laughs> tough character because uh, in, in Revelations, Michael and his angels go against the dragon and his angels and the dragon availeth not. So if that cherubim, the anointed cherub that covereth gets beat by Michael, who's supposed to be a lesser angel, an archangel, that's nobody to mess with. So yeah. even if he can stand before Satan and say, the Lord rebuke you. Yeah. He's leaning into the powers of the Lord. We should take Amen. note of that. You're right. You're Amen. Right. And, and, and he's saying it to an entity that's greater in power and might than he is. Absolutely. So imagine the, I mean, the Lucifer must have been like second in command under Jesus in the hierarchy of these angelic beings, the, the Benai Elohim, the sons of God. So, yes. uh, you know, while Jesus Christ is the eternal son of God, he was made to be the anointed cherub. And the interesting word about anointed is it's the same word as Christ, you know. Christos. Christos yes. in Greek and, and Messiah in, in the Hebrew. So it's exactly right. It's it's the anointed one. And so he, I, I truly believe that he actually was a king on the earth for who knows how uh, long before Adam was even created. Before we even came on the scene, there was an eternity past, if you want to call it that uh, he reigned over. And then, and when he decided it wasn't enough and he wanted to be God, he mounted an insurrection against the Lord himself. What audacity. And yet he must've been so powerful Brazen. that he thought he could pull it off. 
Yeah, yeah. brazen, bro. Like yes. I, I couldn't imagine standing before the God of creation. Yeah. And then like going in a little corner and saying, you know what? I could probably do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're going to get this his, his brother's like, ah, yeah, I mean, you know, here's my idea. I know he's doing things, but I, I believe in the pre-Adamite world as well. Yeah. Oh, amen. The, I full, it makes I, too much sense. Yeah. In fact, I've been working on a book now. I, I feel like I keep saying this, but it's it, it's never gonna happen, but I know it will in the Lord's time. But it's the working title is the world that was. And I'm I'm basing it on the idea of the pre-Adamite world, but in particular when uh, Hebrews chapter one, it says that God, who in and, and recent times has spoken us, to us by his son, but he said in whom who made the worlds plural. Yes. And um, and so we know Jesus spoke. And I, I didn't do that verse justice. He said, um, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, among whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And that worlds is plural. And while Jesus spoke of the world to come, and we know there's a world to come, uh, that implies that there's multiple worlds. And I say there was a world that was. And I think it was that world that was destroyed in Genesis 1, verse 2. Absolutely. And and the Bible doesn't just give subtle hints or things mm -hmm. that can be interpreted that way. They give pretty clear, hey, you know, pointing signs that there was. The, the biggest sign to me is there seemed to be some sort of a, uh, um, a grudge that was held against Adam. Adam was pinpointed oh, yeah. by that serpent uh, for yeah. a reason. He had dominion. Adam had a kingship. He was given dominion, uh, dominus, dominate. He was given a kingship on earth. Absolutely. When he, when he sinned, he laid that crown down. And I believe since he is referred to in the New Testament as the God, little g of this world, mm -hmm. that he had every right in some way to pick that crown up. You know, that's an interesting point. And I'll tell you, uh, for most of my life, I think I've believed that was the case. I've, I've recently come to review it a little bit differently than I used to, though. And I'll tell you why. And, it, and it's due to another author I'm going to give credit to, which is uh, Timothy Alberino, uh, who wrote the book Birthright. Yes, and, another fantastic author. Oh, he's phenomenal. I just saw him at BlurryCon in Nashville. And uh, That's awesome. man, what what a treat that whole that whole thing was. But uh, Tim makes the point that God gave, just like you said, he gave Adam dominion of the earth. And by the way, I have a dear sister in Christ who, who was a member of my church and I, I, her name is Lindy. And uh, she once made a funny statement that I carry with me to this day about it's like Lucifer is described in Ezekiel as every precious stone was his covering. He's the sum of wisdom, perfect in beauty. He had it all and he had reign and he had dominion of the earth. And so he rebels against God because he wants to be God. And God destroys that. And he says, all right, look, I gave you every advantage. I can do better with dirt than I did with you. So he makes a mud puppet. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know? awesome, bro. <laughs> Isn't that great? And that he is gives amazing. him his former kingdom. <laughs> he gives Adam dominion. And you've got to know the dragon, this beautiful, spiritually high-ranking creature is looking at this mud puppet going, What's he How doing? How envious he must have been. <laughs> you gave him my dominion and he wants it back. So you're absolutely right about that. Wow. But getting back to Timothy, he contends that it wasn't just a matter of because Adam sinned that Satan gave dominion of the earth, because later on, many years later, David wrote in the Psalms that the earth is given to the children of men in Psalm mm. 115, 16. So right. it's by title that men grant the God of this world that power, which is why Satan was able to say to Jesus when he tempted him in Luke chapter four, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he yes, said, sir. all this power and glory will I give unto thee for it is delivered unto me. And I give him It wasn't delivered to him by God when Adam sinned. It was delivered to him by the ruling governmental system of the world at that time, which was Rome, which worshiped Zeus, which is Satan or Baal, you, you name it, you've done the yes, research, you, you know it. And so ultimately he was granted title by men. And that's why I talk so much about the satanic global elite or Satan working through his human proxies, which is government. And in many cases, some religious leaders and certainly the World Economic Forum. 
absolutely the World Economic Forum. Yeah. I think that was quarterbacked and the plays were written by him on the sideline. <laughs> you know, that. like uh, so. And, and this is just I can't tell you how much uh, this conversation means to me. It's um, it's not every day I get to talk to someone who's so steeped in the knowledge of the word Amen. and has the the such a depth and understanding of the world through the Holy Spirit. Um, and I, I want to say on behalf of everybody at the Dark Waters family that I appreciate you for that. And I appreciate your podcast being out there because it's needed. Uh, there's a lot of Praise folks who that that they're starting to humble themselves and say, hey, I don't have all the answers. And every time I try to get into this like Kundalini yoga, uh, the Python, the spirit of Pythia wrapping itself around people's spines. They don't even yeah. know. It. So yeah. it, it's just it's a time where I think that. And I may be wrong. I want your opinion on this. That I think God is pouring his, sp his spirit out on all flesh, but just because he pours his spirit on all flesh doesn't mean that everyone's going to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. I think it's making them and compelling them to make a choice. I, I agree, D. I completely agree. And and I, I know the ultimate fulfillment of that prophecy is going to be in the time of tribulation, you know, in other words, but I don't think it's limited yes, to sir. that. And so I would say that when he talks about all flesh, he's talking about all of his not every human being, right? Uh, and, and even in the passage, like in, in Daniel 12, where uh, he's told to seal up the book, you know, until the time right. of the end, and the angel says, knowledge will increase, people shall go to and fro. And I, I think it's not just a necessarily a prophecy of modern technology, it, because certainly our knowledge is increasing in a technical pers you know, perspective of the world. But what about the idea that God's people are giving, being given a wisdom to understand the scriptures that we didn't need to know 400 years ago? Amen. You know, that is, yes, that's in other words, it's true. like a need to know basis. Was it critical that people in 1611 know about the rapture or know about the the satanic manifestation of possibly fallen angels masquerading as aliens or UFOs? Of course not. I don't know what they believed about that back then, but that wasn't their primary concern. The primary right. concern was to get the Bible in their language so that they could proclaim yeah. the gospel because it had been locked up in Latin for a thousand years, you know, or whatever. So, and then the printing press comes along. And so we can make the word manifest to people in, in a, in a way it could never done before. And that was a technological innovation too, that changed the world. So we're seeing another technological innovation now with like you could say the Internet, and AI and all this other stuff. But you see the evil that's coming out of it, too, you know, and how yes. the satanic elites are using that same technology. So my contention is knowledge is increasing in the world against us. But it's also I believe God, by his spirit, has given some wisdom to his people to understand the times and the seasons so we can know what it is we're supposed to be watching soberly for. And I know Amen. that's bad grammar, but you get the idea. <laughs> I, I know I'm from Oklahoma, so that is, I didn't even catch that as being bad grammar at all. <laughs> I think that's an Okie and Texan thing. Like, <laughs> brother, I, I was I was on the edge of my seat, hanging on every word because, like, again, you couldn't have said it better, and it couldn't be more pertinent. The, yeah. the Bible also says to preach unto thy generations. Yes, we're not Amen. supposed to be preaching like we heard Grandpa preach. We're we're not supposed to be teaching like Grandma taught at Sunday school. We're supposed yeah. to be preaching and teaching to this generation because this generation is different than everyone that came before it. And um, I, amen. Amen. It, and you see, you see right, that sir. there's the other side of that, not to interrupt you, Dean, but there's no, no, no. I'm just, I was just going to, yeah. Saying you're right. Like that, you know, yeah, it, it's flowing. It's flowing. That Holy spirit juice is flowing. Is what it is. Amen. Amen. Well, I was thinking that you're, everything you said is so true. And, and, and by the way, it reminds me of something you said a few minutes ago that I laughed at because it was so cool, which is uh, Jesus said, um, you know, he didn't say this thing to say, it'd be cool if you did it th this way, guys. <laughs> but no, this is he was telling us a command, you know. And yeah. <laughs> uh, and so church today, in order to appeal to the new generation, we need to preach our generation, but we don't need to kowtow to their ways. And, and I think that um, when we think, okay, we'll catch more flies with honey. So let's turn church into a rock and roll service. You know, yeah. I mean, I believe in music. I believe in worship and I believe in praise, but I don't want that to be the focus. I, that's not the show. I've seen churches where it is a rock show. It is a concert venue. Light and it's fog machines. Oh yeah. And it's not about the word of God. It's not magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ in a way that he's not, he shouldn't be magnified as a rock star. 
He should be magnified as the creator that died, that became man. And he loved us so much that he that he humbled himself and was obedient to the worst death imaginable in order that he might redeem humanity. And, and in, in essence, he reconciled the, the creation through that act. And that's yeah. that's being missed. That's being glossed over for some song about uh, it's like uh, almost like a romantic love of Jesus when that that's a little perverse to me. You know, when we're singing it, it, about Jesus in a way, I mean, I get why Al Green decided to become a reverend because he God gave him a gift to sing. And he sang love songs and they're great love songs. I love Al Green. You know, I love Let's Stay Together. That's one yeah. of my favorite tunes. But he felt like that's not the way God wants me to serve him. So he changed. And now he's a pastor and he still sings. And he's still musical, but he's doing it for the Lord. He's not trying to make it look like we're in a love, romantic relationship with Jesus. We're his children. We're his dear uh, brethren. Yes. And we're, you know, and so there's a reverence there that he finally captures. And I, 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 I applaud his bravery in making a, a change in his life the way he did when he could have had it all, you know, that Absolutely. the world had to offer. And, and he, you're right. He did. And that's amazing about his story. He did it at a time that it really didn't behoove him. Yeah, do something like that to make such a change, not in the natural, at least. And um, but he did it because I, I, I've read something briefly on it. He was saying how at that point in time, and you can look at other bands and R and B singers, and they were conflating love, yeah, with the love of God, and it was just getting melded together in such a way that when you heard that word, you thought of the perverse type of love and love making and all that kind of stuff, rather yes. than the love of the Father. And I think yes. that's, I mean, that's old stitch. If you ask me, he's, he's been going about this a long time. He the has old, and, uh, the following and, one. And the perversion is still there. Like I, I've even seen like documentaries of some of the current stars, like uh, whether it's like a, a Britney Spears, I don't know how current she is, but you know, Britney Spears or Katy Perry or one of these, you know, beta kitten programming starlets that, yeah. that, you know, they, they'll go and like, they're documenting them doing a tour. And right before they go on stage, they pray. And then they get on stage and there's every satanic symbol you can imagine up there with, with the gyrating, sexualized uh, uh, movements and dancing and choreography. And then you've got the one eye sign and you've got all this occult imagery of serpents and whatnot. 666 six, six over the yeah. eye. And, and then you're, you're pr who are you praying to? So it's, it's all designed to mislead and distract our young people into thinking, oh, she's a Christian. And it's like, you have no idea what you're yeah. dealing with here, you know? So it's, it's part of the deception, Hollywood. And it's, it, and it's a maddening thing for somebody who knows the truth when they see it, because for all that, all that perverse gyrating they do with barely any clothes on at 17 years old, some of them, they'll yeah. come like, you know, uh, uh, nine, 10 weeks later and take the stage and say, I'd like to accept this award on behalf of God. First, yes. I'd like to thank God for, yeah. for killing people and selling drugs. Thank you, God, for helping me put that album together. What are you talking about? Thank you, God. Like, who? You, what God are you praying to? I oh, mean, and I'll like, tell you, <laughs> music videos today, I can't even watch one. They're so right. For, and, and by the way, I, I don't say this to uh, encourage your listeners to do it, but uh, the, uh, the singer David Bowie that died not too long ago, uh, one of the last videos he made was called, I think, Dark Star. Or Black Star, and he was a yes. died in the world occultist. That's one of the most disturbing videos I have ever seen. And, and you know, I've I've never seen it. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about, though. Yeah. And um, Bill David, like you said, he's a died in the wool occultist. He's an yes. old school uh, Crowleyism guy. Yes. So I mean, it, it's a sad state of affairs. He's got a beautiful voice. Yeah. But yeah. just talking about old old Stitch, it's funny yeah. when you were giving him the, the, the descriptions the very super accurate descriptions of them. It talks about how these pipes are built into them. Are these uh, not the words, not pipes. It's um. Oh, it is pipes oh, and tabrets. Is it pipes? Yeah, yes. Pipes yes, and yes. tabrets. You're right. And as a little kid reading that, I'm like, what? Why would God put pipes in some? Like, I'm thinking <laughs> to toilet pipes. Like, is that how angels are built on the inside? Like they have pipes. <laughs> but, right. but I mean, the, he's, he was the, a lot of people say he was the choir director. And it's funny that all these musicians, all a lot of them come from good Christian homes, Bible believers. And by the end of their life, they look 10 times worse for wear. They die tragically of drug overdoses and, and, and uh, you know, tragedy befalls them. And it's a sad thing, but 
there has to be a link between music and our adversary with the capital A. Oh, absolutely. I, I absolutely believe that uh, it's it's very possible that the the king of Tyrus is Lucifer and yes. that he because uh, you're referring to Ezekiel 38 or 28 rather. And um, and in that description of him, it appears that he you know, with every precious stone, there's there's almost a, a hint of like the high priest of Israel in that yes. garb, you know, with the with the ephod and the and the stones on it. And I think that the anointed cherub was probably something that led the worship of God, like a high ranking, almost like a high priest type position. And so he had the built in musical instruments. He had sanctuaries, which he defiled, but I think they were sanctuaries to the Lord. And then we can get into, could that have been the uh, ancient monolithic structures that he perverted, you know? Uh, wow. And, and there's, like there's a question right there. That could yeah. be a whole show in and of itself. Cause right. uh, your, your knowledge of the ancient world in the Bible is amazing to me, bro. I could sit here and talk to you like for <laughs> hours on end, but we, we've come up on our hour. I would like to allot some time, though. If anybody in our chat would like to ask uh, Mr. Mitchell any questions about his podcast or anything at all, I'll give you a few minutes to open that up. And uh, I, I thank you again, Scott. If you, I mean, this is the flagship channel, of course, Dark Waters channel. But I have a channel called the BDRP Supernatural. You're more than welcome at any point in time to be a guest there. We'll roll out the red carpet. I may have to rip it out of the kitchen, but still. Uh, <laughs> I, I cannot thank you enough for not only what you do in ministry, uh, but what you do for anybody who would listen to your podcast, the human family, regardless of what their beliefs are, and Amen. feed them truth. That's amazing. Amen. Well, listen, D, I, 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 it's my privilege to be on here. And I got to tell you, I, I'd love to maybe chat with you after we're done sometime about getting you on yeah, our show because sure. you're a researcher and that's something I don't do. So God gave you these gifts of, of discernment and this experience. And I, I wonder if you might, uh, well, let me just extend an invitation. That would, to that you would be honor anytime. That, yeah. that, it'd be an honor. Yeah. That'd I'd love honor. to have you. So reach out to me uh, whenever or let's exchange contacts so we can get you on our show too. Yeah. We'll, we'll absolutely chop it up after the show, bro. I figure, I figure <laughs> we're going to be uh, nerding out like Bible nerds. And uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, we got one question so far, Jeffrey Canonez. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. He asked what's dog man. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with dog man, but it's a natural born, supposedly natural born werewolf, werewolf type creature that was a, uh, First, the name first came from Dogman in Michigan, but there's yeah. the Cynocephali of bi biblical times and uh, all sorts of dog like monsters. What do you think they are? Yeah, that's a good question. And by the way, I'm going to take a stab at Jeffrey's last name since I'm from South Texas. I think it's Kinonis. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. He can correct <laughs> me if I'm wrong. Um, that sounds but, right. Uh, yeah, it just sounds like he, he, he yeah, we have a lot of uh, Spanish brethren down here. So, but I think. Um, I think it's it's like any cryptid. I think there's probably if, if it exists and it's real and, uh, you know, because sometimes maybe there's like I'm not convinced there's a Loch Ness monster, you know, but I'm not saying right. that it's not possible. But I, I think it's indisputable that the Bigfoots are some form of uh, uh, of hybrid Nephilim creature that uh, somehow is 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 still with us and might maybe even hyperdimensional. And so Dogman sounds like it could be another type of that. It, you get into the same category of things like the the skinwalkers or what have you. Yes, and and yeah. even possibly chupacabras. So you're you're dealing with things that I think uh, are very possible and uh, I I don't have the expertise because I'm not that kind of a traveling researcher or archaeologist. So I'll defer to the people that are experts in cryptozoology, but I do think it's very possible that these things are around to menace and they're satanic and there's nothing about them that is part of God's original creation or plan. Amen. I agree wholeheartedly. And you judge a tree by the fruit it bears. And just from being in this field, the fruit of any kind that a lot of this stuff bears is pretty sour. Like yes. you'll, you'll see, our, you'll, you'll see our brethren in the comment sections after these shows announcing publicly that they have faith in Lord Jesus Christ been born again and they'll argue to the cows come home in yeah. front of the world you know over these monsters it, so that's not good fruit whatsoever thank you for that question mr how do you say his last name again because I'm, I'm an okay I'm kind of, 
Yeah, Quinones. I think I'm I'm pu I'm pulling on my San Antonio roots here, but I I want to say it's Quinones. Quinones. Yeah. That sounds a lot better. I'm old country boy. I, I, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Quinones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do better with Cajun French because that's where I grew up. But I've been living in Texas now for well over twenty something years. I barely have a grasp on uh, uh, terrible English, so. <laughs> Just, uh, of course, uh, Mafi Martinez. I hope I pronounced that right. He says, "What does Scott think about the increase in cryptid sightings?" Uh, Scott, it's pretty much what you talked about last uh, last question. But what do you attribute to it? Uh oh, do we lose him? Uh oh, you there, Scott? He may have fell off, folks. I'm sorry. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Hear me? Not sure what happened. There we go. Can I'm, you hear I'm me not now? sure either. Yeah, I can hear you. I, I thought maybe the stream fell or you, you cut out, but uh you're back. Oh with no, us I now. I don't know what happened, but I I you know it's not surprising to me that the devil would try to hinder, right? You know. Um, we, we prayed beforehand, so like we sure <laughs> did. We sure did. I, I knew he was gonna come against this one. Of course. Well, back to Mavi's question. I was thinking that um uh, this increase in cryptid sightings is probably, I think we're getting close to the time when disclosure is going to happen. They want to be seen. L.A. Marzulli, I mentioned him earlier, uh, posted a picture that was sent to him from a trail cam uh, of a family in Minnesota on his website. You can go check him out uh, on YouTube. But uh, it's it looks for all the world like a Nordic um, alien, right. so to speak, which I believe is a fallen angel. And this thing is looking right at the trail cam. It's like there's a there's a manifestation of an Ooh. orb or a portal. And then the next 10 seconds, you see this thing looking right at it. And I don't believe it's a hoax. I believe they want to be seen selectively. They're making their presence known in a in a some sort of a graduated plan. And uh, I think it's a, not going to be long before the government is going to start to reveal. Yes, they're out there. Yes, we've been working with them. And all those so-called conspiracy theories are going to start coming home to roost. Yes, sir. And when you see these things begin to come to pass, lift up your head for your redemption draws nigh. Amen. Uh, Luke I, 21, I, I love it. <laughs> yes, sir. I can't wait, bro. I'm ready to get out of here. I'm Me ready too. for Revelations 19. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we'll take one or two more if y'all got them. Like, I'm telling you, I, I, I'm hyped and amped just from this interview. Like, Me too. Up, from the, the, it's like that Holy Ghost fire is on it. Amen. And by the way, just while your listeners are, are thinking about a question, I want to let them know that um, the resources that they might want to look, if they want to learn more about any of this that we do, it's simply BibleMysteriesPodcast.com. Uh, just an easy one to remember. Just link it all together and you can you can find all our shows. You can find other resources. And then uh, if you want to know more of a pastoral evangelical teaching I do on Sunday mornings, that's simply UTB now utbnow.com and which is short for unlock the bible now so um it, you know we do we do the con, you know the controversial things on the podcast but i try to preach a more uh ministerial type message uh on utb now utb now and both of those are linked in the description below folks for the ones listening now in the chat and the ones that will listen after at home check this gentleman's stuff out he's legit he's the real deal <laughs> spirit-filled pastor a great a better podcast than me. He's a better host of a podcast that he's a guest on. All I right. Doubt it. I, 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 <laughs> so, I doubt uh, that. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you've done wonderful. D you, you've been so gracious to let me just rant and go on. And, uh, but God, what great insight you have. And like I said, I, I, I definitely want to reach into, into those gifts the Lord has given you and see what you've got to share. I'll be more than happy to at any time, brother. Um, Amen. We, all right. We have one more for our last question. Do you believe, and this is one that I've been um, debating myself, and we'll talk about that one at, at some point in time, but do you believe that the wild beasts that will come upon the earth in the end days are going to be Bigfoot and Dogman? And I, I think he's referring to Revelation chapter six, I want to say, where it talks about the riders and... Um, Behold, a pale horse and his rider was death and hell followed with them. And power was yeah. given unto them to kill with sword, with fire, with death and with the beasts of the earth. Yeah, that, that's absolutely in Revelation. And I, I think um, and I want to give another shout out to another dear brother in Christ who, who's been a guest on my show several times. Ryan Peterson, 
and he wrote the book of yes. uh, the final Nephilim. Uh, and he deals with that uh, pretty extensively too. So you might want to check out his book, but um, he's got an interesting perspective about the revelation uh, seals there in chapter six, uh, which is that, and i never even considered this until he discussed it with me, but that um, when the lamb of God opens, starts to open those seals, it's because he had just ascended to the father. And he takes the book out of the hand of him that sits on the throne. Those seals began to be opened the, the moment he ascended up. And that the, the one that's hmm. not yet opened is the sixth seal, which is the great earthquake and the, and the stars you know falling and everything else. So when you look at it in that perspective, which is a very interesting point of view, when you think about it, the, the, the horses there are you know war, famine, uh, death, and um, all that stuff. And the white horse is the deception. Uh, he's going forth right. to conquer and all that stuff. So that's been going on for 2000 years. And I think the, the final two uh, seals have yet to be open. So these beasts of the earth, in other words, we've been seeing things like Dogman and Bigfoot a long, long time. You know, not just that's late. That's exactly right. They've been around a long time. So I think they've been a part of that. And I do believe that uh, when you go a little further in Revelation, like nine, when that bottomless pit is open, even worse things are going to come out of there. So yes, uh, I think hybrid creatures, uh, genetically manipulated creatures that the fallen angels have been messing with, like they did in Genesis six, are going to be prevalent during that time, which is why it says men's hearts will be failing them for fear. That, that's exactly right. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. People, people think that they, they everybody's mind automatically goes to Nephilim. Yeah, that's true. But there was a whole lot more stuff going on in Noah's day. There was all sorts yeah. of madness. But yeah, and, and I think we're going to come to that too. I think we'll come again. Oh, to yeah. That too, just like you if, said. If we're not already there, yeah, absolutely. Amen. Ladies Amen. and gentlemen, I'd like to thank my guest, my brother in the faith and new friend, Scott Mitchell from Bible <laughs> Mysteries Podcast. If you're not subscribed like I was just as I, as we were talking, um, if you haven't subscribed, go subscribe now. Listen to his podcast. Support this gentleman. He is doing the good work for the right reasons. Scott, you have an Thanks open on. invitation back here to Dark Waters or my channel anytime. Amen. And uh, folks, we thank you for listening. Make sure you hit the thumbs up on this button to get it shared into the algorithm so more people can enjoy it. And if you haven't subscribed to Dark Waters already, you can hit the subscribe button and make sure you click the bell to stay up on all the new content. God bless you all.